Okay, so here's week 10 quiz walkthrough. It's about sampling distributions before you learned about confidence intervals. So we've got a sample for this for this version of it. I've got uh, bass in some lake, have a mean weight of that with that for standard deviation. Uh, they tell us it's normally distributed, so the central limit theorem applies. Um, so that lets us use work with small samples like three. So they want us to find the probability the mean weight is less than one. So the big issue here is we've got to change the population standard deviation into one for this sampling distribution. So 0.8 divided by the square root of three is, let's see here. So 0.8 divided by the square root of three. I'm getting 0.461, let's see, about point. Uh, Four six one eight eight. I'll leave that. Then to get the probability, I could go to I could calculate a z-score and go to a, go to the z-score table, look it up, or I could use an applet. And I did that earlier, so I'm going to grab my applet picture. So I want to be less than one pound. So I put the mean, the mean of 2.1 in there. And I typed in my standard deviation. Notice I rounded a little bit. And then I said below one. And there's the area. And that's the answer. Okay, now I want to find the probability that the mean weight is more than three pounds. So I'm going to go back to my applet. And I kept I kept the mean the same. I kept the standard deviation the same because I'm still dealing with three fish, a sample of three fish, and I said above three, and that's what I got there. Now, in my version of the test, they kept the, the mean and the standard deviation the same, and I'm still working with three fish, so I didn't have to change any calculation. I'm still using the same center, that same standard deviation. So then to, I just threw the applet. And they wanted me to find between, let's see, between 1.8 and 2.3. So that's what I selected here, between 1.8 and 2.3. And it gave me the shaded area. And that's the probability. For question three now, uh, they've changed things up a little bit. I know I've got a mean of 2.2. I've got a standard deviation of 0.6. And I've caught six fish that have a total combined weight of 6.4. And what's the mean weight of my six fish? Well, I'm going to take a 16.4. I need a pen. 16.4 and divide that by six. And that gave me, let's see here, 16.4 divided by six. And I got 2.733. And then, if the six fish are randomly caught, what's the mean? What's the chance that my mean, the mean weight, will be greater than what I caught? So I mean, this is certainly higher than what the mean lake for the population is. So, uh, what we got to do is calculate the new standard deviation for this. So let's see, these this fish in this lake have a mean uh, standard deviation of 0.6, and we caught six of them. So 0 0.6 divided by 6, square root of 6, divided by the square root of 6 is 0.2449-ish. So that's my standard deviation, that's my mean, and I want to know greater than that. No, actually, yeah, so 2.2 is the lake population. My sample mean was 2.73. Well, how likely is it that I got a, I would catch six more fish with an average that high or greater? So now I'm just going to go to the applet. And 
and I substituted in everything. The population mean, the standard deviation for the sampling distribution, my sample average, and I want to know above it, and that's that probability, pretty small probability. So then to answer the last part of this question, well, let's see, because my probability was pretty small, and it was certainly less than 5%, I'm going to say this was an unusual result. I got lucky. I had a, I had a lucky catch. So for question four, they wanted me to see, they told me, um, so this is the binomial approximation of the normal distribution, that last section in that chapter. Um, so they told me that's the percentage of adults in the U.S. that are uninsured. We took a sample of 230, and out of that 230, we saw 14, 44 of the people were uninsured. So what's the mean of the sampling distribution? Well, in order to find the mean of the sampling distribution, we're going to take the probability of the success, which was 16.8%, times it by the sample size. I got 38.64. To get the standard deviation, we take the probability of success P times the sample size times the Q. And I didn't crunch that all out here, but what I did get was 5.67. right there. Now they want us to calculate this z-score. You see my answer and here's how I got it. I got the 44 adults minus my sample mean from before the 38.46 divided by the standard deviation. When I calculate that I got 0.95 and then in order to get the probability of, of of that higher or higher since I already had a z-score I just use the standard normal curve I said a mean of zero standard deviation um, mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, and I said above my 0.95, and that's my probability, about 17%. So then, is that probability of 17%, does that show us unusual? Um, which of these statements are valid? Uh... Yes, because my probability, so for the first one here, because my probability is so high, I have 17% chance, it's entirely likely I could go out and get another sample of, of a 230 adults and have a similar result, or maybe even higher than that. Uh, so, uh, using the benchmark 0.05 is because somebody who definitely cannot include right, because our probability is a lot higher than 0.05. And there's greater than 16% chance. Yeah, we had a 17% chance. So the correct answer here would be all these statements are valid. This last, for this last question, similar kind of question as the last one, normal approximation of the binomial distribution. Um, I, I did, have done a couple of things here all at once. Uh, so they want to do the mean. So I did 60%. I did 60% of my 60 students, or the 60 students, and that gave me a mean of 36. Um, then I got the standard deviation. I, I did point. I did it the long way, 0 0.6. 0 0.6 times 60 times 0.4, 1 minus the 0.6. I could have also just taken the 36 that I just calculated, times that by 0.4, then took the square root, so that's my standard deviation. Now they want me to calculate a z-score for the 28 people. So 28 is the number minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. I had to make sure I did that subtraction first. That's my z-score. And now I'm looking for the probability of getting a group of 60 students with that few uh, people like in pepperoni. So I went out to the applet.
And I substituted in, because I had already had a z-score, I said, let's just use a, uh, the standard normal curve. So I said, mean is zero, standard deviation of one. And I said, below my z-score, and that's what I got, a small probability. So since my probability of having this happen was less than um, 5%, I can probably say that this is an unusual event. Definitely. How about what else do they have going on here? The quoted value of 60% is generally up. I would say that's probably true. Um, perhaps it said, doesn't mean it's definite, which is important. And perhaps a quoted value of 60% is not accurate. So I would say that all of those provide a possible justification. Okay.